now we need to move on to Alexander. Um, so here we have Alexander uh, teach Latsa, and here very, we go. Very very well pronounced. Thank you. Uh, it's hard to not just follow up with the um, with the discussion, but thank you. Um, mm. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk. It's really, really great seeing you all, although I have to admit uh, seeing you in, in, in person in Brussels, I'm also looking very much forward to. So I, I named it EHDS, um, European uh, Health Data Space, a chance for the European Union to foster longevity. It's more what um, in my last job, I used to be uh, used to work on research funding. And that's how I would have called a project um, and I don't know really the solution to yet. So I hope maybe with the help of you all, we find a good solution. So uh, let me also add, I don't speak, um, I speak in my own capacity. Uh, I don't, oh, the presentation doesn't reflect uh, the, that of uh, the opinion of the German government or the, the parliament. Um, why is it important that we talk about this now? I think it's um, a very special time because um, it's the first time ever that uh, the European Union, or I would say the European Union actually addresses health on a big level. And uh, I don't want to open up the pandemic discussions again, but really, um, in a way, I think in Europe, it was a, it was the time where the member states saw that a disease, illness, uh, doesn't doesn't stop at borders, yeah. So uh, it makes sense to have a have a common strategy maybe for for health, and also for sharing data. So I think that really I gave a push uh, to, to this idea. So um, when you see, I, I quickly move through the slides because I think the discussion is actually uh, much more interesting. Then um, they basically see what we expect of the European health data space um, to do. So, of course, for the patients, it's to have access to their own health data, enabling sharing data, change your data, control your data, and all that should be um, in line with the general data protection regulation. Um, what's that question? Or I just continue. So for the healthcare system, um, it should, of course, uh, also foster longevity, but it's uh, probably also an idea to, um, to, make, uh, to, to cut some costs, also to make better decisions for patients, therapy medication, treat patients more eff effectively and easily. Um, basically, it should provide medical history across European borders. So basically, if you, you know, allowing you freedom of movement and non-discriminatory, so if you Work in the U. Uh, work in Sweden or, or work in Denmark, and uh, you have an accident on your holidays in Spain, but you want to be treated, or you, or by chance, uh, you're in a German hospital, so that all this data is, is accessible. So for the economy, of course, cost cutting, uh, standardization, um, the opportunity to use AI technology for the development um, of devices and medication, based on all these millions of health data set. Uh, for policy, it should enable politicians basically to make better better decisions and to make the healthcare system more resilient. For research, um, to have this high quality and anonymized health data, and that already opens up a lot of problems, which we maybe discuss later, should offer new chances for the European researchers for developing new therapies and medications. Um, so now we're getting to, to the difficult part. It's actually establishing this uh, a European health data space. It's um, when we, I, I chose Germany because they know best how, how we work. Um, and there it's already difficult on the national level. So we have 16 counties and each of them has um, their own basic government and has their um, data protection officer, for example. Um, so that leads to a lot of friction. Um, and that also leads to a lot of, I would say, delay in the process. Although if we compare ourselves to other German, uh, to other European countries, um, we lack in digitalization anyway. Yeah, so uh, it's quite a quite a stretch for us. Nevertheless, in the coalition of the, of the new government in Germany, which is now in place for, for one year, um, there's this commitment that we, that we really want to do it. Um, and that's again what it, what it should all do. And 
what we now tried is to um, uh, have some opinion of the Chaos Computer Club. The Chaos Computer Club is basically is hackers. What they normally do is um, they take what um, governments or companies uh, develop and uh, after one week or a month or so uh, they uh, find a lot of uh, problems with it and uh, tell you how to uh, or not they tell you but they they say how it's not safe so um, what we would love to do is to um, get more of these people on board to help us with developing um, uh, solutions um, and not uh, not later fixing fixing the problems um so this is the this is the timeline in general and there you see that it's really urgent to act now also maybe to speak or it would be great for me to get some examples of other european countries how, how you do it um because i think if we set it up now in a good way it's really the cornerstone of, of a lot of good stuff in the future but um, as some other projects, maybe if you see, if you, if you don't do it right in the beginning, it takes you a lot energy and you waste a lot of time later to, to, fix, um, to fix the problems. So um, yeah, and with that, that, I'm open for the discussion. Thank you very much, Alexander. Uh, are there, let's see, there are some questions, not really. Uh, let's see, any hands up? No. Well, okay, then I will ask a question. What about uh, the possibility of an in, of individuals being given, you know, re requiring an opt in before their data is used? Yes, yes, that will exclude some types of data, but still you would end up with a huge database. Yes, it's a very, um, thank you for the question. It's an it's one it's one option um if we if we have to decide between opting in opting opting out um the advantages disadvantages for 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 both let's say maybe a third option would be to like if you really want to share your data and um like let's say if you of course we need to find a way for the let's say normal person so who doesn't really maybe um spend so much time on, on, on um, thinking about, about the data or about for them we need one but maybe we can have an, a plus let's say which is more or less like a contract so you could really share you could really decide to share all your data maybe uh, that would be another a third option um, but for uh, when it comes to technical level I'm pretty sure it will be well, I can say I I hope it will be an opt out solution. Um, maybe maybe it will be an opt in with an opt out solution. We will see. Um, maybe it will be different for um, for the type of data. So maybe some data will be especially uh, even within health data. Some data might even be uh, might have different uh, different uh, set of rules. Um, that's. Yeah, that, that we will have to have to see. It's also an idea to just work with correlation points. So to, you know, to to take the research questions and then just grab um, grab correlation points in the data and not just have the whole data. What I think is most uh, what a lot of data protection people see as a, as a big problem is um, to, to have all the all the data if you, if you don't really need them. Yeah, and then. It's, on the other hand, I often see that data protection is just taken as a uh, as a fake argument to, uh, <laughs> to 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 maybe not um, put so much work in your system. So um, I, I actually I'm, I like data protection. I think it's it's just often misused in a way. Yeah, I, th um, I think it's uh, yeah it's of. I mean, I see it a lot if you should try to change something in hospitals. Uh, often it's just used as as, a, as an excuse. Okay, I don't know who, who put their hand up first, but let's start with Patricia. Hey, Walter, they normally are in order. Oh, they are. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. This was quite refreshing. Uh, in your slide uh, on Chaos Computer Club, at some point uh, you say merging mechanisms for delocalized data. 
with free and open standards between research and healthcare system. Uh, can you just develop a few seconds? What this, does this mean? It's totally elliptic and opaque to me. So what does it mean? I totally agree. It's basically this, um, I think in, Germ in Germany you would call Eierlegende Wollmichsau. I think in English it's trade of all square, like basically a round square. Yeah, basically you want, um, you want, ah, yeah. yeah, exactly. So um, that's what I say, what, what you want. That's uh, not, and I have no idea really uh, how to reach that on a technical level. So um, an idea for the process could be to first make clear what takes priority and then then see what is really what is really possible because i think yeah it's more like a claim than uh, than something what would really happen yeah. go ahead jose uh yes alexander a uh, good presentation and good initiative um but you were mostly focusing um on uh, your german experience obviously uh, but uh, do you know anything about other European countries advancing on this and also at the European Union level as well, please? Yes, uh, maybe I was jumping a few steps. So it's from the European level. Um, so every uh, member state has to find a way to make that happen. So and that's um, why I think it's so important that we talk about this now, because uh, Ideally, we, we, we don't have all different systems. Yeah? So, so what the regulation says, what should happen is that each member state finds uh, a body, uh, finds, finds some uh, agency in their, in their country. And then um, with, and this agency is responsible for complying with this regulation. Um, but it might mean that there are like a lot of different national um, regulations but they should all fulfill this aim. And I think this is, there you see why it's problematic <laughs> and it might be good. It might be that there are already a lot of, um, a lot of European or a lot of um, um, best practices from other European countries, which could, let's say, yeah, be a model so that we don't all develop our own to comply with this common goal, but it's come to the European level. So it will, happen in any case yeah so the the in every member state the only way is or the only question is will it happen in a way uh which is giving really an advantage or will it happen in a way which is slow and which will, will not fulfill um any any uh, uh which will not help research yeah okay didier go <clears throat> Yeah, um, thank you, uh, Alexander. Uh, I will ask my, uh, only one question, very short, uh, is uh, how do you think, so uh, my conviction is uh, the European health data space, like it is uh, supposed to be, it's, uh, it's great, it's great. How can we, what can we do to accelerate this um, for example, uh, well, I will come to this uh, uh, in a few minutes, but uh, there is uh, theoretically a great uh, announcement that uh, by 2025, uh, each citizen will have access to uh, uh, his electronic data and so on, but uh, I'm afraid it's not going to happen. So what can we do to accelerate things, in your opinion? Um... I think in Germany, what one could do is to make a case for a system which is already in place in some other countries to really say, look, this is a model, this is what works well. Um, you have, I think already in France, you, you have, you have in theory, a good, uh, good way to access to, you have the right to all your data and basically it doesn't really work. Uh, also for researchers, you have a, you have a way, but it's just, what, what was the percentage? Maybe five, five, like 0 0.5, uh, um uh 0 0.5 um uh, oh, you say under, uh, 0 0.5 um cases of of uh so five out of or let's say 995 uh researchers want to have the data and just five get it yeah so so the the yeah. the, the chance of your um proposal getting through to get access to this is quite low so um but in theory, it's a very good idea. So 
um, coming back to your question, um, not sure. I would say for, for Germany, it's already an advantage to say, look, we in Denmark do it like that, it works. Um, and maybe uh, writing to your local <laughs> local members of parliament to say that you're really interested in this initiative, that could already maybe help, yeah, to say, to see, because at least in my, in my opinion or in my experience, um, often um, the people who, who, are, who feel very strong about data protection, um, they have quite a strong lobby and writing to, to, to the members of parliament quite a lot. Yeah. Um, so maybe, and then often mixing up with then like this, uh, you know, the, the state uh, is, um, is, is watching everyone and stuff. Yeah. So really like making a very um, emotional case. So it might be helpful to also make a very emotional case um, that as a human, you have the right to health as a human, um, as, as a citizens of Europe, you have the right that your government does the best uh, for you to not die prematurely. Yeah. So, um, and keep you in good health. So that is maybe something what, what we could, one could do. Yeah. Okay. So Daria, she also, I think wrote her question, but I'll let her, please Daria, you always have great comments and questions. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, so yeah. I just wanted to ask uh, Alexander uh, if you check this uh, European Council uh, Convention for, or for Bioethics of YEDO Convention, it's also called. There are strong restrictions on using uh, personal medical data if, uh, unless you have the signature in advance. So it makes impossible to use all previously collected data uh, in some ways, in some cases. So uh, basically it's better to check it to make sure to uh, pre avoid these traps. So did you check it already or maybe you plan? It's good. I think I haven't really looked into it. Thank you, I, I, I checked. Yeah. There are also protocols that a bit, mm -hmm. uh, make things a bit better. I will uh, send it to you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so I guess we should move on, but uh, it seems to me that the data should be recorded at the healthcare provider level where they have a standardized questionnaire that, that basically precludes identifying the person that the data came from. Anyway, so let's move on now.